when we deal with the triple integration where we need to transform the variables x, y, z to the new variables u, v, and omega, the Jacobian is the determinant of the 3x3 three three matrix, which is obtained by taking the partial derivatives of the x with respect to the u, v, and omega on the first row, partial derivatives of the y with respect to the u, v, and omega on the second row, and the partial derivatives of the z with respect to the u, v, and omega on the third row. Then we would write down the triple integration with the new variables by multiplying the function with respect to the new variables to the Jacobian and integrate this with respect to the u, v, and omega. So let's consider an example how to do this technically. We would like to transform the rectangular coordinate system to the spherical coordinate system. And basically, x, y, z would go to the r, theta, and phi. Where r would mean the distance from the origin until this point was the coordinates x, y, z. Phi would mean the angle between the x coordinates and the this line, which is the projection of this vector, and the theta would be the angle between the z and this vector. And we would connect the x, y, and z with the three new variables using the three equations. So let's evaluate the Jacobian for this transformation. So the Jacobian for this transformation would be the determinant of this matrix. So let's create this matrix first of all. On the first row, I need to write down the, the partial derivatives of the x with respect to the r, theta, and phi, respectively. So the partial derivative of the x with respect to the r would be sine of theta, cosine of phi. Its derivative with respect to the theta would be r, cosine of theta, cosine of phi. And its derivative with respect to the phi would be minus r, sine of theta, sine of phi. On the second row, we need to write down the derivatives of the y with respect to the r, theta, and phi. It would be sine of theta, sine of phi, plus r, cosine of theta, sine of phi, and plus r, sine of theta, multiplied to the cosine of phi. And on the third row, let's write down the derivatives of the set. Cosine of theta, r, sine of theta with the minus and zero simply. And now let's evaluate the determinant of this matrix by going through the entries on the third row. So we would multiply this entry to the determinant of the matrix which is obtained by eliminating in the first column in the third row. It would be cosine of phi multiplied to the determinant of the matrix which is left would be this multiplied to this minus this multiplied to this. So this is r squared cosine square of phi sine of theta cosine of theta plus, so since here is minus, with this minus it becomes plus, r squared cosine of theta sine of theta sine square of phi. Let's go to the next one. So the next one would be minus multiplied to this term multiplied to the determinant of the matrix which is obtained by eliminating the second column in the third row. So this would be sine of phi cosine of theta. So this term multiplied to this one multiplied to the r sine of phi cosine of uh, sine of theta cosine of phi plus r sine square of theta sine square of phi and plus this term multiplied to the determinant of the matrix which is obtained by eliminating the last column and the last row which would be simply zero because at the end we have to multiply this to the zero anyway. So now let's try to simplify everything. So I can see here the similar term the r square sine of theta cosine of theta r squared sine of theta and cosine of theta. If I take them out, I would get r squared sine of theta cosine of theta multiplied to this cosine of theta, it would be squared. And what is left inside the brackets are sine square of phi plus cosine square of phi, which is obviously equal to the one. So it would be r multiplied to the sine square of phi cosine square of phi, r sine square of phi sine square of phi. So it means that we could take out r sine square of phi, r sine square of 
theta, sorry, in what is left inside the brackets, it would be cosine square phi plus sine square phi. So obviously this term is also equal to one. And here I have the similar terms as well. So we have here r squared sine of theta and here as well r squared sine of theta. If you take out the r squared sine of theta outside the brackets, what is left is this term, which is cosine square of theta, plus this term, which is sine square of theta. And at the end, what we have is r squared sine of theta. And this is our Jacobian. So if I would like to move to the spherical coordinates, our triple integration of the f with respect to the x, y, z integrated with respect to the x, y, and z would be equal to the triple integration of the f, which now depends on the r, theta, and phi, multiplied to the Jacobian, which is r squared sine of theta, integrated with respect to the r, theta, and phi.